Hey, this is Mark with Eigen Designs and welcome to the channel. I have got a great video for you today that's going to combine two projects I've done in the past. The first is a sit-stand desk, which I built about a year ago. And the second is an American flag cutting board where I used my CNC to inlay stars into the cutting board. Well, today I'm going to be combining those two ideas to bring you an American flag sit-stand desk that turned out fantastic. So let's get building. To build this desk, I'll be using a combination of walnut and maple. And I intentionally picked out some boards that didn't have any knots or grain irregularities that would normally be seen as attractive features on a piece of furniture. Instead, I want the attention of the person using this desk to be focused on the flag that's created from the wood as opposed to the features of the wood itself. So I rough cut each of the long boards down into more manageable pieces. On the left, we've got the two components that will make up the union. Then I've got the maple and the walnut boards that are going to be the long stripes. And then finally, the maple and the walnut that will make the shorter stripes. It's now time to take those pieces over to my jointer and planer and get them squared up. I'm ripping each one of these stripes about a quarter of an inch wider than it needs to be, and I'll use my planer to take off that last quarter of an inch. This will make sure that all the stripes are the exact same width, they are flat for the glue up, and I can use a digital gauge on my planer to get it dialed in just right. And with this last trip to the planer, we now have all the stripes ready to go. Now, both the short and the long stripes are still longer than they need to be, but I prefer to keep them longer until it's time to final cut. Now it's time to turn our attention to the canton or the union, which is going to be where I carve all the female star pockets that will eventually house the male plugs for the star inlays in a later step. I've arranged all the components on the table and I've decided to break this glue up into three distinct sections. One is going to be the union, two is going to be the short stripes, and three will be the long stripes. Let me pick up the camera and swing it around to the other side so you can get a better look at this POV style. I'll now be taking the short stripes and the long stripes and preparing them for glue up. While that's drying, let's tackle the CNC portion of this project. The walnut panel that we glued up earlier is a little too wide to fit through my planer, so I start off by using a 1 inch surfacing bit from Whiteside to flatten the slab. Anytime you're doing inlay work, it's really important to start out with a flat surface that's exactly parallel to the cutting plane of your router. After flattening the piece, I switch to a 1 8 inch Whiteside bit to carve out the female pocket inlays for each of the 50 stars. To carve the male star plugs, I'll be using some half-inch maple that I glued up off-camera. 
Again, I'll be using the 1 8 inch white side bit to cut these. And rather than sticking to a particular pattern, I crammed as many stars as I could on my available piece. And I actually cut more than 50 because sometimes the grain pattern doesn't look good on the star or maybe it comes out imperfect. So I cut about 60 of them and used the best 50 that I had for the build. With the CNC work done, it's now time to glue all of the plugs into the pockets to create the inlay. And yeah, this part gets pretty tedious. With the inlay work done, I took it over to the table saw to trim it to final dimensions. Nice. I used the drum sander to remove the excess material from the plugs. I could have used a planer, but I was nervous that it would cause some chip out. Now we do have an ingrain to ingrain glue up, which is an inherently weak joint. So I'll be using some dominoes to reinforce this and provide some more structural strength to this particular connection. Now, when I made the American flag cutting boards last year, I didn't have a domino. So I used a self-centering dowel jig and some dowels in order to create the exact same effect. So if you don't have a Festool domino, no worries. There's some alternatives out there for much less money. I do want to say that I've been using my new workbench now for about six weeks and I continue to find creative ways to help it improve my work in the shop. I'll leave a link to that video if you want to go check out how I built it. Now I ended up having to get kind of creative with this glue up because I didn't have a clamp long enough to straddle both ends of the piece. So I used two different parallel clamps in conjunction to get enough pressure along that glue seam. Unfortunately, while I was trying to align the two pieces using my rubber mallet, I ended up channeling my inner Wreck-It Ralph and causing some damage. But no worries, nothing a track saw can't fix. The final glue up for this project was to attach the long stripes and again I used some dominoes to help with the alignment to make sure that everything came together just perfectly. It's now time to put the finishing touches on the desk and I'm going to go through these kind of quickly. I started off by putting a nice fresh edge on each of the ends of the desk, making sure to cut it to the final dimensions specified by the flag calculator. I then sanded my way all the way from 80 grit up to 220, and then I used an eighth inch round over to put a nice radius around each of the corners and just soften the edges a little bit. I then proceeded to install threaded inserts to attach the table legs on the underside of the desk. I finished this desk with Rubio Monaco Pure, which is my go-to finish for a piece of furniture like this. So here's how the American flag desk turned out.
This might be the coolest piece of furniture that I've ever made. I was really happy with how the CNC inlay work turned out, and I'm glad that I went with a maple inlay rather than epoxy, because I feel like it makes it more of a refined piece of furniture. If you like this type of content, make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe, and here are two more videos that I've queued up for you to have a look at. Alright, I'll see you on the next one.